Having gone into this with little to no knowledge on what this was about, I was not ready for this. The Iron Claw. UK being the UK, we've got an, another Academy Awards season film like one or two months later than America. So a lot of people have probably covered this already and I heard it was good, but didn't actually know what it was about. In short, it's the true story of the inseparable Von Erich brothers who made history in this intensely competitive world of professional wrestling in the early 1980s. Zac Efron plays Kevin Von Erich, who's the more focused point of the film and it essentially follows the rise and fall of this wrestling family. And it is absolutely gut punching borderline wrecked me by the end of it. Wrestling isn't really my thing and I was curious to see some of it going into this. It's not really about the wrestling though and what I mean by that is that you don't need to care about wrestling to enjoy this but if you do like wrestling it's probably a good base to make you interested in this family. I won't go into spoilers but the family believe in this family curse where the family is constantly hard done by but as the movie goes on you go on and see that it's this wrestling focused father forcing his failed ambitions onto his four kids causing all these problems. And holy moly Holt Mackle Laney plays this piece of shit father and he's just, he just does a great job at making you hate him. Both him and the mother, played by Maura Tierney, do well to not feel like they're individually malicious but feel more like products of outdated parenting and also outdated thoughts on men's mental health. And that second part is the most important play for this film and it's something I want to come back to later. The four brothers are played by Zac Efron, Jeremy Allen White, Harris Dickinson and Stanley Simmons. And each one of them is great in this. You're sold on how close their bond is with each other so you feel the joy in when they have their highs and ultimately feel heartbroken when they go through their lows. Zac Efron in particular, this might be his career best as of yet, at least from what I've seen of him. He just reinvented himself completely for this. First off, he's just ripped his shit in this. I remember seeing interviews of him after Baywatch where he mentioned the struggles of getting into that sort of shape and not really wanting to ever do that again, but clearly at some point post COVID he just went, yeah sod it, let's just go twice as hand this time. <laughs> Besides his physical appearance and his great wrestling skills that he shows off in this, he gives us this incredible emotional performance, witnessing the downfall of the family and overcoming his own depression. Lily James is also here as Pan, who's Kevin Von Erich's wife, and she's also really good in this too. Almost wish we saw more of her side to this, but the film was already two hours long so I can see why they didn't. She plays this great emotional support and it's refreshing to see the drama not be necessarily romance related between them and have it be her trying her best to be this rock of support for him. Jeremy Allen White, who I don't think I've seen in anything else off the top of my head, was another standout for me, who plays a heavier part in the latter half of the movie. But each of these brothers essentially suffer from the hands of this unsympathetic mother and father. And you can see these brothers rely on each other so much, but we see that classic male mentality where none of them speak up to fight for their own mental and physical well-beings, and they slowly fall apart. There's no graphic scenes in here, but there's suicide in the story, and if you're uncomfortable with that, then this film won't be for you. But I like how much this film shows us how these men, especially in older times, struggled so much with voicing their troubles and how that crumbles them over this time. Also kind of shows us how much mental awareness has come since the 80s, but I also kind of hope that this film serves as a refresher for people. Just to check in with their family and friends every now and then, but also if you're not doing great, to uh, reach out to someone to talk to. Even if you don't feel like you can talk to family and friends, there are good Samaritan websites and phone lines for you to reach out anonymously, the details of which I'll put on screen now. Moving on from that, being a film set in the 80s, it's shot in the fashion of an 80s film, and it does look great. The insane outdated hairstyles, the slightly dulled colour scales that you'd have from an older film quality. It also has a bit of grain, which I think they added in post to further sell it. The final big thing that I want to give huge props for is the camera work. The majority of this movie, they've chosen to go with these more intense up close camera shots. It feels more invasive and couples really well with this constant feeling of uncertainty and anxiety that the movie is feeding to you. You don't often get wide shots and it tends to be when it's wrestling related and it's going good in the ring. So many shots were just up close in their faces or their upper halves of the body and it's a really smart decision. So as the characters begin to unnerve, you feel the same with these intrusive point of views. And so I really do recommend this. It's not an easy watch, but if you're feeling up for it, you won't regret it. It's a great movie, but something I won't be ready to watch again anytime soon. Surprised it honestly didn't get more recognition in this award season. So yeah, that's The Iron Claw. It's just come out in the UK this weekend. States got it a while ago, I believe. So maybe you've already seen it. If so, I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, feel free to leave a like and subscribe and all that. And as always, stay tuned for more reviews on movies, anime and video games. Until next time guys, take care. Bye bye.